there was this one Fatui Harbinger who was teased all the way back in 2022 through a funny little story teaser. Fast forward to a year after and we got her in the actual game within Fontaine. She was kinda disappointing, not gonna lie. Even made a slightly controversial video on it. However, this video is about what 2024 has to offer for this lady story-wise, as she had high demand and was mainly lacking in purpose and relevance both. If you're looking for gameplay stuff, either play the game in like 20 business days or go to the seemingly hundreds of videos talking about the character's kit, who isn't even out yet. With everything out of the way, grab a snack, get comfy, get a drink or something, preferably hot right now, gonna be honest, and enjoy the video. This part is like an intro, an intro to a life-changing piece of media that can only be described with adjectives such as divine, phenomenal, and most importantly, dry. Can you guess what I'm referring to with the hints given? Personally, I wouldn't get the memo, so for the people like me, it's this video, congratulations. You found a mediocre video covering a slightly more than mediocre topic. Anyway, this part is like an intro because of the fact I'm kinda just filling in the context for what I'm talking about. Sure, speculations are cool, but I'm speculating about Arlecchino. With a clear goal in mind, I want the writers to fix whatever the hell they did with her in 4.1 and 4.2. It's been three versions since we last saw her, and the main things I want to discuss are things like how irrelevant she is to the overall story when you can save the ability to think more than the average Genshin player and actually think about what's going on here. Arlequina doesn't do anything. She's a scary little red herring to the storyline, and that's all she is besides having that sense of mystery. Though what red herring doesn't? Making a Fatui Harbinger a red herring and only that is nothing short of disappointing in my books, yet I'm sure this will become a recurring problem in the future once you consider the lack of space made for the new Harbingers down the line. Now, you may disagree, so let me just clarify properly. Arlequina has four main scenes throughout the Archon quests, specifically being Acts 4 and 5. I'll list off all her kind little deeds each time I cover a scene during the next minute or two. Let's go gang. During the first scene, featuring Nuvulet, Farina and the lady herself, she does nothing but irritate and intimidate the duo. So now, in my capacity as his attorney, I request that child be turned over to Snezhnaya. We have a responsibility to cooperate with Fontaine and resolve what has happened to him together. Within her next one that features Farina once again, but now also the Traveller and Paimon, she continues pushing this intimidation, and gives a lot of interesting ideologies to the player as well as interesting viewpoints and more. I have now had two chances to enjoy tea with Farina. I have to say, the leadership of Fontaine is even more inscrutable than I had imagined. I once surmised that Udex Nuvillette must be the Hydro Archon, but now, that doesn't seem right to me either. Thematically, she has a bit of purpose, but narratively, not really. In the third scene, she sends the Traveller to some ruins after helping Navia recover from the flood that happened within Poisson. And in the fourth, she talks a bit. Or some stuff, I know. Yeah, Arlequino did do a little bit. She indirectly pressured the Traveller into going into the Fortress of Meripede. She got the Traveller to find those bits and pieces of ancient prophecy within the ruins I mentioned, and I'm sure she had quite a large involvement with Linny, Lynette, and Fremene. She even made them go into that same fortress. Here's the thing people, it doesn't matter. You could just make Linny the Harbinger and it would honestly be cooler due to the fact he explicitly betrays you within Act 1. However, this is under the current reality of Arlequino hardly living up to her role as a Harbinger. The leaks have arrived and version 4.6 is looking spicy, almost as spicy as the incredible amounts of literal heat radiating from her phase 2 design. If 4.6 goes well, Arlequino will live up to her role and boy I'm quite excited. Time to look over the leaks and discuss theories my friends, there's a lot to unpack here. This part can go over the leaks and how I think they should fix her, recovering them but not with tape. They'll still be leaking long after this video's release. Anyway, firstly, Arlequino is releasing as a playable character. Yeah, second Harbinger to release in their Harbinger form. I'm looking at you, Wanderer. With every 5 star that releases, they usually also have a story quest that comes alongside them. However, there are a few exceptions. I'm looking at you, Wanderer. But supposedly, Arlequino is not one of them. Not only does she have a quest, but I'm retracting my statement from mere moments ago and guessing it'll be in the interlude chapter, and more like a coming gift with the character rather than explicitly a story quest. So, what's in it? These things help Arlequino follow the traditional route a Harbinger should follow if they want to be awesome. 
To elaborate once again, she doesn't do so as a 4.5. What are those things exactly? Well, I'm glad you totally asked, because a recurring pattern in existing Harbingers is that they're antagonists. They all pose as a threat to the Traveler at some point or another, excluding Child, who serves more as a twist, becoming one later on. He's played around with a lot, but still lives up to his role. Signora is the antagonist throughout three whole nations, so questioning that is hardly even plausible. Scatamouche is good for like 10 minutes in a limited time event, until he's villainous in both that event, Inazuma, and Sumeru. He becomes good after, as his arc is concluded. The Toro helps Scatamouche reach his full potential, and is arguably the most evil of all the Harpages, from what we know. The fact is never once changed or even slightly warped, he is always bad. I mentioned why Arlequino doesn't already do this, being that while she does, it's all recontextualized with her real motivations. Harbages always show action, not exclusively words, and she's the only one that hasn't. I want her to both show action and have that action be genuine. She can be good after, sure, just don't make that change something that's secretly always been the case without any of us knowing. Don't recontextualize it all, please. Harbingers usually show this action through boss fights, having three banger themes typically, and they usually become playable in one way or another once their arc is concluded. Because yes, they have arcs, complete ones. Detore's is incomplete, but the conclusion of Scatamouche's leaves space open for his. Signora died being the only exception from the playable rule, and Child is currently the purest case of a playable Harbinger. He still shows up often, but his main arc in Leoway is long gone. His arc was that of withheld information, shock value, and pure villainy. Then they show a different side to him, enabling him to continue to return. They're also all important to the story. They shouldn't feel replaceable or irrelevant. Arlequino currently lacks a finished arc, or arc at all so far, a boss fight, any importance to the story, genuine action, taken beyond words, and most importantly, consistent antagonism. She appears as such until, like I said, it's recontextualized. However, from what's shown in these leagues, almost all of these problems are answered, even bringing Child back again. Because yeah, this quest seems to be quite crazy from what I've overall seen. Within the leagues, we see that Arlequino has two phases, as I mentioned far earlier on in the video. Within this boss fight, the themes tell us that it's incredibly personal, focused on characteristic expression first and foremost as shown within the child's choir, opera influence and periodic illusion of a slow tempo. This all shows, to me, that this fight won't be some kind of cop hat or anything. It'll be the real deal, also confirmed by the fact it'll become a permanent weekly boss. However, this isn't a music analysis, let's focus on the more raw stuff. It's worth noting that, like I said, Charles returns in this quest. This could mean he was sent for whatever reason before he got back to Snezhnaya or soon after he returns in order to do something related to her, which could be from sorting out rebellion to assisting the Traveler in some other way. The motivations behind the fight beginning are also a mystery though, if I had to guess. The the fact she willingly attacked Farina was a small look into who she really is, and this quest will complete that domain of knowledge, though this isn't Sumeru. Making her more malicious, or at least threatening, is the right way to go, and a great way to express something is for it to directly affect the player, being the traveler going head on without Lakino. If the fight is at least justified, it'll fix everything I'm worried about. Of course, it's a little irritating that both Harbingers were next to a relevant during the Archon quests, but this is the best way the writers are going to be able to fix it, so they better do an amazing job. Of course, there might have never been a real problem, and it could have been planned since the start. That's somewhat likely, but let me have my opinions. Well, let me have my opinions. I consider it a problem, and I will continue to do so. Let me summarize now, since I was probably a little confused this whole time. Overall, 4.6 is going to fix the problem, as Arlequino will be relevant, have the character she was made to have, be not only intimidating, but threatening as well, as, well, being cooler. She'll be the harbinger she's meant to be, and I'm happy about it. What else is there? Yeah, the next update should make her cooler. Maybe I'll even make an apology video if the quest is so good it manages to change my perspective on Acts 4 and 5. However, we'll just need to see, won't we? With that out of the way, like, subscribe, join that membership that I lowered the cost of to like a dollar or two, and have a good day. This video was super subpar, but just wait, next we can look into the oceanic depths of Enkanamiya. Love you all. We just met recently, right Miss Navia? Hmm, usually, I would call this a coincidental encounter, but that doesn't quite fit this time. Besides, it never even crossed my mind that a Fatui Harbinger would come looking for me. 
Thanks to the Nave, Spina di Rosula received generous support from the Fatui, which allowed us to complete the rescue and evacuation work so quickly.